hi welcome to episode 116 today we're going to be looking at what it means to live by the spirit or live under the spirit kind of a continuation on the topic of salvation that we've been on here we go so if you've been a christian for any length of time you've probably heard of romans 8 1 there's now no condemnation for those who are in christ and what this means is that we are walking according to the spirit to be in christ is to walk by the spirit if we're walking in the flesh in the desires of the flesh there could be condemnation but when we walk in the spirit there is no condemnation if we live in accordance with the spirit we're not under the law so we cannot be condemned and that's in galatians 5 18 but if we live by the flesh then it seems to me from my understanding that we are living in under the law so to live by the flesh is to live under the law and so growing in our relationship with jesus transforms us to be more and more like him bearing the fruit of the spirit which is love and encompasses also joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control the bible says there is no law that is against these things i.e you cannot be living out the fruit of the spirit and have any law standing against you like there's no accusation or condemnation that can come against you when you're living out the fruit of the spirit so living according to the spirit is compassion is kindness is humility is gentleness is patience is bearing with one another is forgiving each other it's love everything that we do in our words in our actions should be done in the name of jesus that means everything that we do and say must honor god so our words cannot be careless we can't just talk anyhow, do anyhow, do what we like or say what we like. And in Galatians 5, we see many examples of what it means to live by the flesh, acts of the flesh. You have sexual immorality, hatred, discord and division, jealousy, rage, rivalry, envy, drunkenness, greed and so on. So these are things that are not of the spirit. If we have these things in our lives, we need to ask God to help us overcome them and so that we can live by the spirit because the Bible also says that we cannot please God if we live by the flesh. And one of the things that we aim to do as believers is to please God because we are appreciative of the saving grace that we have received in Christ Jesus. And this is why there cannot be any kind of goodness without the help of the Holy Spirit because the Bible says that God is the only one that is good and without his spirits, we cannot define what good is. So even if our actions are always in alignment with the law, what is good and what is right, right? So we can say that, oh, I do good, I, I'm nice, I'm kind, whatever, I give, I give, all these kinds of things. But your inner self, your thoughts, what is in your heart also matters because Jesus talked about it. He said that even looking lustfully at a woman is adultery. Calling your, calling somebody else a fool or stupid, Jesus pretty much likened it to murder. So like that is what living by the flesh is living by the flesh is lying even what we call white lies what we call minor exaggerations or unnecessary flattery like flattering saying things that are not true basically all of those things are living by the flesh doing things that are selfish not thinking about other people in our actions relying on ourselves instead of relying on god or relying on the wisdom of other people seeking help in men and not in god first these things do not please god and so we are to live our lives as a living sacrifice that is pleasing to god living by the flesh is living by the desires of the flesh which brings death but living by the spirit means that we set our minds on things that are above which is what jesus said and that gives us peace and brings life and the desires of the flesh and the desires of the spirit cannot coexist they are mutually exclusive they can't be in the same place one has to win over the other and because we have god's spirit in us the spirit can win because we can choose to live by the spirit god created us to be like him in love and in holiness and jesus is that expression the human expression that we've seen the image of god god himself becoming flesh so that we can see what it is like that it's possible jesus became the ultimate example of what it means to live by the spirit to live in love to live in compassion to have good thoughts towards others and not just in words but in thoughts and in deed 
and we can see that jesus gives us the example of surrendering to the will of god even in the times where it can be difficult where it's like uh, this is hard i don't want to do this is there not another way can you can we not find something else to do and jesus ends up saying um let your will be done so that is what it means to live by the spirit to choose god every day because that is what helps us to live out what is really good because we can't do what feels right because most of what we've been taught comes from the world and the de- desires of the flesh so we can't just go by our feelings of what is right or what is wrong we have to rely on the leading of the spirit what god has said in his word to show us the way that we should go and so when we live by the spirit when we have god's spirit we belong to him and so when we belong to him we can live according to his ways when i talked about yesterday about when we died when when christ was um in paul talks about like being buried with christ and resurrected and i died with christ and the life i live is is christ in me so we we are now hidden in christ in with christ in god and so we can bear the fruit of the spirit we can live as ones who are led of god's spirit and how do you know that you're living by the spirit is when you are bearing the fruit of the spirit if before everything everybody does used to set you off and you're always angry and shouting at people if you're seeing that that is not happening anymore if you're taking the the time to choose how you respond because you can't choose how you respond if you choose to respond differently from how you've been responding before that is the work of the spirit in you you're working in partnership with the spirit of god to live out self-control to live out patience to live out forbearance with other people one of my favorite concepts from scripture is the idea that we can come exactly as we are to god the way that we are in our filth in our mess in all the things that are wrong we can come in that exact way that we are and come to god and the best part is we can change from there god is not telling you to change before you come to him he's not asking you to transform your life and change everything about you before you come to him he's saying come exactly the way you are right now wherever you are however you are come in that way to me and i will transform you you will be transformed so is you first enter into there and then you are transformed you don't change yourself and try to overcome all the mistakes you've made and overcome your sin and overcome all of those things by yourself and then you now say okay now i can appear before god that's not how it works you have to come exactly the way you are and let him do that cleansing work that sanctifying work of the spirit as you consecrate yourself and you submit to that process that is what it means to live by the spirit it means that when somebody's annoying you and you too you want to give them a piece of your mind and the holy spirit is telling you that no because you are supposed to be kind and you're supposed to be patient to be kind and patient to that person who has said the most annoying or rude things to you you choose love instead you choose to be kind and respectful even when the person has disrespected you that is what living by the spirit looks like and the more that you spend time in the world the more that you spend time in fellowship with god with the holy spirit and with jesus then you start to see that you are becoming transformed your appetites are changing you don't react quite the same way you used to before and people that you know that have known you to be the old way that you were they will still be calling you by that old thing ah is it not you that used to do this disease but it doesn't matter because that's not you anymore like they said you used to it's not you so it doesn't matter what you did before you have changed you've become a different person and if you think about it it's like how even in the bible you see like they refer to the woman with the issue of blood but that woman did not have the issue of blood again since the day she met jesus but even till now we still call her the woman with the issue of blood so people will always want to refer you to you by the things you've done in the past or the things you've not done in the past and all those kind of things that kind of keep you there but that's not who you are anymore you are now new you've been transformed and you leave that out it doesn't matter how many times you've done it in the past whatever it might be it doesn't matter whether you even still did it today or yesterday it doesn't matter you're not still it's still not that you're not that person that person is dead there's a new you who is alive in christ newly now and you can live that new person out and that is by daily 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 choosing minute to minute day to day hour to hour week to week month to month year to year daily choosing to live according to the example that jesus had had set for you and the bible also tells us that there's no temptation there's no trouble no nothing that you are facing that jesus is no experience on earth so he knows the struggles he relates to that and he can help you to overcome it and it really is just depending on god living by the spirit is depending on the spirit to help you to navigate every single circumstance of your life big and small no matter how tiny you think it is like what should i wear today what should i today those are things you can people 
people will tell you that oh can't you think about those things by yourself yes you can but you can also ask god like isn't it nice to have somebody to ask for every single thing in life like from what should i eat to who should i marry and should i take this job and this is not to say like living by the spirit is not then turning god to like an eight ball machine where or the eight ball where you shake 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 and say should i go or should i turn left like that's not what it is is from relationship it's not like you come here today it's like call, 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 open the door should i go to this place no okay bye the next time you want to know something knock 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 yes how can i help you should i buy this thing no okay bye till next time like that's not what it is is from a continuous relationship with god that's where living by the spirit comes from you can't live by the spirit if you're not in relationship with god like it it doesn't work it can't happen that way and in the quote-unquote big moments and big decisions if you've not built that muscle of talking to god hearing his voice understanding his voice obeying him is it now when the big things come that you think you will not be able to do it that's not how it works like imagine you've never asked god for guidance on anything in your life before or he has been talking to you and you're not you can't identify his voice and then now you want to marry or you want to move to a new country and you're not asking like you it's going to be very hard for you to be able to discern what that voice looks like so it's better for us to start from every day day day-to-day moments everything even when somebody annoys you instead of responding in anger you can take a moment breathe and say god please help me in this moment how should i respond if you want to like it doesn't matter how tiny it may seem to you because you may think it's a tiny decision but you don't know anything in the grand scheme of things in the grand scheme of what god knows you don't know anything so the thing that you think might be a small thing might actually be a big thing and how would you know if you don't go to the person who knows every single thing that literally has happened is currently happening and will happen in the future so yeah that's where i leave you today bye Thank you for listening to today's episode of A Couple of Things. If you found anything insightful, interesting, or you enjoyed this episode, please do share and remember to like if you can, wherever you listen to your podcast, leave a comment, subscribe, so you get the future episodes. Thanks! Before you go, this is a reminder that you can ask me to talk about a specific topic or answer a question that you have by filling the form in the show notes to submit your suggestion or question. Bye!